Nortel Retirees and Former Employees Protection Canada, Wikipedia Article Audio NRPC is a non-profit member-supported organization for Canadian former employees of Nortel. It was formed after announcements in the media that Nortel Networks, a large multinational telecommunications company, had entered bankruptcy proceedings in several countries. Constituency History 2009 Representation Order and Incorporation Agreements between Nortel and the NRPC February 8, 2010 Agreement reached with Nortel on behalf of all former employees Opposition to February 8, 2010 Agreement Rejection of Nortel pensioner deal by the court Reduction of benefits in 2011 Most of the members of NRPC are entitled to a defined benefit pension, however, it is not clear how many are entitled, now and in the future, to medical benefits and other benefits from Nortel. In his statement to the Finance Standing Committee on March 25, 2010, Don Spruill, president of the NRPC, stated that 11,000 pensioners or surviving spouses are entitled, and 700 pensioners or surviving spouses are not entitled to medical benefits. The implication is that roughly 8,000 former employees are not now, nor will they in the future be, entitled to medical benefits. However, According to Barry E. Wadsworth, Associate Counsel Canadian Auto Workers representing unionized Nortel former employees, all individuals currently receiving a pension are in receipt of medical benefits. According to an October 13, 2016 Reuters article there were 22,000 participants in Nortel's underfunded pension plan in 2009. On January 14, 2009, Nortel Networks initiated financial restructuring under the company's Creditors Arrangement Act in Canada. At that time, Nortel Networks stopped paying severance packages, transition allowances, and deferred wages to former employees and retirees. NRPC was started by volunteer Nortel pensioners from Ottawa in an effort to obtain court approval to have this non-profit organization sponsored by Nortel Networks. The organizers quickly formed an ad hoc committee and organized several mass meetings in several Canadian cities. The meetings were announced at NPYG a self-help group formed in 2002 for employees, ex-employees, retirees, and family members of Nortel Networks. Word quickly spread and the local Ottawa media started paying attention. NRPC announced their first website on January 23, 2009. On February 14, 2009, the Ottawa branch of the NPRC opened its website. On May 16, 2009, the Montreal website of NRPC started directing traffic to the newly formed NRPC website. In an order issued by the Ontario Superior Court of Justice on May 27, 2009, Donald Spruill, David Archibald and Michael Campbell were appointed representatives of, and the law firm Koski Minsky was appointed as legal counsel for, all former Nortel employees, with the exception of some unionized employees. In September 2009, the NRPC incorporated as a not-for-profit organization. On February 8, 2010, NRPC announced it reached an agreement with Nortel in which Nortel would advance $57 million to fund medical and life insurance benefits for some Canadian pensioners and their survivors, 
and provide long-term disabled employees with wage replacement, medical, and life insurance benefits until December 31, 2010. It is unknown how many ex-employees will benefit from this agreement. In return, NRPC agreed. A group of Nortel former employees have retained the services of Rachin Genova LLP to voice their opposition to the February 8, 2010, agreement in court. Other creditors also opposed the agreement. The Ottawa Citizen reported on March 4, 2010, that the dissident Nortel employees objecting to a deal with Nortel lost their first battle in Ontario court. However, the Montreal Gazette reported on March 5, 2010, that the judge may veto this agreement. The Ottawa Citizen reported on March 6, 2010, that Ontario Superior Court Justice Morowetz would issue a ruling within week. On March 26, 2010, Ontario Superior Court Justice Jay Morowetz rejected the February 8, 2010 agreement. Siding with the note holders and the official committee of unsecured creditors, Justice Morowetz concluded that the agreement was unfair to non-employee creditors. He said the agreement was flawed because it created risk instead of eliminating uncertainty referring to a clause in the agreement that allows Nortel pensioners, long-term disability recipients and others to demand a bigger share of Nortel assets if federal bankruptcy rules change in future. The condition is unfair to other creditors because it requires them to make concessions in favor of the former employees and long-term disability employees today, and be subject to the uncertainty of unknown legislation in the future. A letter sent to Canadian pensioners in July 2011 from the Nortel Pension Administrator Morneau Sheppel announced that pensioners in Canada would have their benefits cut. A webinar held by the legal firm Koski Minsky on July 22, 2010, addressed some of the questions raised. The wind-up of the $5 billion Nortel pension plan began in October 2010. Between that time and July 2011, Nortel pensioners had been receiving their full pensions even though actuaries have determined that the pension trust is underfunded by $1.5 billion. The reduced payments are to retroactively reflect those overpayments. According to the Toronto Star, about 12,000 current Nortel pensioners face benefit cuts of as much as 43 per center depending on their province of residence and where they worked for Nortel, which filed for protection from creditors in January 2009. In Ontario Outside Ontario To not oppose any Nortel employee incentive program that the claims of continuing and former Canadian employees of Nortel will be treated as unsecured claims, unless there is a change to the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act, that Nortel will stop topping up its underfunded pension plan after the last payment made in March 2010, that Nortel will be released from liability regarding the pension plan or the Health and Welfare Trust except for claims based on fraud gross negligence, contractual rights, or misrepresentation by the directors or wrongful or oppressive. Unionized members will get 75% of their non-indexed pensions, non-managerial staff will get 70%. Union members will get 59% of their indexed pensions, non-union pensioners will get 57%.